This is marriage and music, marriage and music Marriage and music, 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 music This is marriage and music, 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 music. marriage and music What's up, beautiful people? I'm Rye. And I'm Whitney. And, and this, this is, is Marriage and Music. Music. We are a husband and wife team. In every sense of the word. We sing together. We dance together. We cook together. We do. <laughs> It'd be good too. We, we do. It does. It do. We worship together. We pray together. Yes, we produce together. We travel together. We right, wait, wait, wait. We, don't, we ain't traveling. We, well, not as much right, right now. Exactly right now, but we have traveled together. We have together. traveled together. We write together. <laughs> we do a lot of things together. We do a together. lot of things together. We've been doing things together for about 17 years now. That's how yeah, long we've been friends. That's a long time. A little over 17 years, right? Probably. Yeah. But this year, 2020, we celebrated our 10th year mm. anniversary. We're 10 years old? Decades Let's on that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the next song deserves to be heard. And this song is special for me because it was originally performed by one of my favorite male vocalists, Mr. Donny Hathaway. Yeah. And this is important because for a long time, people have said I had a smooth voice and I didn't know how to take that as a compliment. I didn't know how to appreciate yeah. those words describing my yeah. voice. But Donny Hathaway, Marvin Gaye, Luther Vandross, yeah. they all had smooth voices that were still very impactful. Yeah. Smooth doesn't mean boring or non-dynamic. Yeah. And so for this song, I was excited but nervous because I'm like, this is Donny Hathaway. I mean, Layla Hathaway. She's amazing too. Yes. And I want to make sure that we do this song justice. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you and I, um, it's important for us to put our spin on to songs, like keeping the the integrity of the original, but putting our spin on it because it allows us to connect to it and yeah. not just covering a song, but we can connect to it and it feels more authentic. Absolutely. And we, that, that feeling and that connection can, it comes across when we're recording it. So then when people are listening to it or when we're listening to it, it just mm -hmm. feels so real. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think we have to feel it first. Yeah. Legitimately in order for us to authentically share it yeah. musically, you know? Yeah. And I think also this song allowed us to still utilize some of the things that we're known for, like our singing in octaves. Octaves, yeah. Um, the famous line of the song, we decided this, for our version, to sing it. Instead right. of having the music the, play. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And that was interesting, and I'm, I'm sure people are going, some people might love it, some people might not, <laughs> but that felt good to us, so that's what we did. And I mean, this is something that we've been learning even when we were creating Cartoons Tuesday, that series, mm -hmm. like we were singing the rhythms, and and so like we're just now incorporating all these things that we're kind of learning and have been embracing about ourselves mm -hmm. as creatives mm -hmm. and putting it into this album, putting yeah. it into our music. So singing it instead of using the horns, we're like, no horns, let's just sing. Let's just sing, sing it. Yeah. <laughs> But we gotta harmonize or something in there. It can't just be all octaves, right? The first one could be. Like the first round, mm -hmm. the whole round. think this song is special because even though Christmas is going to be different, the holiday season is going to be different this year than yeah. Christmas is in the past. Yeah. What's going to make this Christmas a very special Christmas <laughs> for you and me is our ability to focus on what we do have, which is each other. Yeah. You know, our ability and commitment to mm -hmm. enjoying each other's presence and being mm -hmm. present with each other, to yeah. cherish each other, to yeah. really enjoy yeah. The fact that we can still be together. Yeah. And I think that was my approach with the production. Um, I didn't think about 
the big fanfare horns. Yeah. I wanted to start with Rhodes, something a little sweeter and something yeah. more intimate yeah. to kind of set the vibe. Yeah. I get so excited when you get on that piano because I'm like, ooh, I don't know what he's going to do. And then I get to hear it and then we get to add, add stuff to it. Yeah. And, you know, us creating the vocals, like I like how we arrange. It's just mm -hmm. like, I got this idea. You got this idea. Mm -hmm. And then we just start singing it. And sometimes our mess ups become the actual arrangement. Yeah. And then it's just like, OK, this is this is what it's gonna be. <laughs> Apogee mic and a little box and our, with our little setup on our dining room table again. Cut these rough vocals. Fire, sir. Fire. I want to put you up there. Fire, sir. Blaze and red. We're gonna do a harmony. Fire. Fire, sir. Blaze and bright. Fire, sir. Blaze and bright. I wasn't really being serious. challenging just not trying to make it perfect like we we sing and we keep going and we keep going and then we have to remind ourselves it's just the rough vocals it's just the rough vocals but what is that right because if the rough vocals get leaked right you know what i'm saying <laughs> We not even, a mess. But not even no, but not even <laughs> just that. I think it's uh, we we both honor rehearsing properly. Like we we honor practicing as if it's the real thing because that's how we help like develop ourselves as artists and as mm -hmm. singers to hone in on being more consistent with yeah. how we want to do what we think we want to do. Mm -hmm. And so like, if we only just did it with the mindset of, oh, it's just rough vocals, we don't really get the full feel of what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a huge part of why we go in, but then we have to reel it in and just say, look, it's 3 a.m. This is this just is this. <laughs> to give the musicians an idea of what we're gonna do. But I think it's good, it's a good balance that we have like making sure that we're comfortable with where it's at, like where it's feeling. Oh yeah. Emotionally and that we're connecting to it. But then again, not trying to be too perfect where it's taking up too much time. Because my wife, if there's if, if we're listening to a rough vocal and it's not right or it don't feel all the way right, she gonna let me know. I don't wanna hear that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, I get an idea, but we're gonna go downstairs and record this because this I don't feel every time I hear this little part, it could be one little part. So I'm like, <laughs> she, she feel how she feels, so I can't get yeah. mad at that. <laughs> it's true. I cringe. <laughs> I cringe. And he'll say, Bae, are you like, sure you're cool? Because I don't want you cringing tomorrow. Man. About... Whatever. <laughs> I still love you, though. Yeah, I love you too. You must be cringe. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so. Then we go downstairs and record the real vocals. Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't always happen like right after we do the rough draft because we like to listen to the song. Exactly. Sometimes it's like a couple weeks or a couple days. Yeah. But we, we literally, eventually... Yeah, we literally play it in a big speaker around yeah. the house while we're cooking, cleaning, mm -hmm. whatever, just 
feeling it, seeing if, with it, seeing if anything is too, too like right on the beat. We critique it pretty much. Like we listen yeah. to it, we critique it and say, okay, we did this, but I actually want to try. Do this here. Yeah. So then we go downstairs and we do whatever we agreed upon from listening to it over and over again. Yeah. We go downstairs and record it. And that's a, that's a journey in and of itself. It is. The recording process. Yes. The real recording process. Uh, yes. We're caroling through the night. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Will it be we'll a very be special Christmas, very special Christmas for, you for you and me? And this Christmas, Christmas will be, we'll be a very special very Christmas, Christmas for Christmas you and me. So, like, recording the vocals for me is always challenging because especially since we listen to the rough draft over and over again we all we start liking the rough draft yeah. and we start loving it and so then it's like it's a it's pressure like we put pressure on ourselves cuz then we're trying to like recreate that feeling and so then it's hard to not try to recreate it but just reconnect just find a fresh connection yes. with it so that it can still be authentic like yeah. we have to we have to remind ourselves that every single song yes because we listen to it like oh we, it has to sound like that oh man that man, breath that, that was, I took look, exactly that vibrato, <laughs> that vibrato was right here with it you know and that's sort of, for me i'm like if you try to reproduce it you're never going to live up to it because that rough draft was done yeah the in way an organic supposed to be, the little way, moment yeah and this recording deserves that same approach. Fresh, fresh connection. You know, you got a guide now because you've already yeah. done a rough draft, but yeah. you still got to bring that full connection to it. Yeah. Get out your head, get out your ear, trying to reproduce and yeah. just like and feel it. Communicate. Yeah. So I'm glad that we was able to do that. <laughs> I felt good about it. I, I, I felt good about it you too. Know, it was a lot of takes, but I felt good about My it. My goodness. <laughs> Cause that the feel of it is so important. It's so important. And not for nothing, but when we record the rough draft, we're out in this space, so like you get the reverb, the things are bouncing off of things. Yeah, so and you it sound made, better. So it's uh, yeah, right. It's it's, it's 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 a filter. It's a, it's, 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 it's coloring our voices in a different on. way. Then you go downstairs and you get into that studio mic, and that's mic is, and that it's mic just is getting raw everything. vocals. You and hear you're like. I thought I could sing. I ain't as good as I thought I was. I'm like, can I really sing? Like, am I really? Dang, I thought I was. I thought I could sing. <laughs> because we're both so particular in how we want things to sound, we're both mm -hmm. teachers and arrangers, and it can get into. Not it can. It gets intense. <laughs> it gets intense. Just about every single project, every single Man. song. But this was one of the fun ones. Yeah. This is one of the fun ones. I love the way you start the song off. You ground it. And you doing what you do help me, helps like stabilize me to come in and do what I need to do. Mm. I mean, well, thank God for that because you sound amazing on the second <laughs> verse. I love the way you sing that. Thank you. It's so precious. Like I had so much gratitude and like joy inside of me when I was singing it. Mm -hmm. Like I had to like, it was, it was, it felt precious. Yeah. I was just like, oh, <laughs> that's what it sounded like. I love this feeling. And you, like, da -da -da -da, da -da, yeah. like a little fairy. It was perfect. It was so tastefully sang, baby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Next time on Marriage and Music. It's about love. Yeah. They thought it was over, but it's not now. Marriage and music. I am blazing bright. We're caroling through the night.